I feel like you can't call it an NRL magic round without magicians. How would that translate in the hard-hitting world of rugby league? I think they'd be good with the sleight of hand, the yep. deft passes. Maybe um, the dummy? Yep, yeah, but when it comes to putting their body on the line, I think they'd probably get really seriously injured. We need to do something about the amount of time it takes a sin bin player to exit the field. What about any player getting sin bin for the Titans? We say, if you get off in the next 10 seconds... We'll sign you up to another team. Hello listeners and welcome to another exciting edition of The Voluntary Tackle, the only NRL podcast prepared to invest funds into a Nathan Cleary v Jay Leno cage match to finally determine which chin is the world's strongest. Before we start the show, we'd like to remind our listeners to please rate and comment on the program on iTunes and keep us going throughout the season and you can also email us on thevoluntarytackle at gmail.com but first, please welcome back to the show. The only man bold enough to claim that Ivan Milat wasn't such a bad bloke. It was the backpackers who shouldn't have mouthed off like that. That serial killing advocate I refer to is, of course, Chip Jones. No, it's great to be back. Um, You know, learn the language. Just learn the language. That's the start, right? Okay, so you think that uh, Ivan Milat was less of a serial killer and more of a xenophobe? I think think there was some some xenophobic qualities there, you know. Okay. Excuse me, sir, do you have that time? Okay. Like, yeah, I'm just going to kill you. I don't think he ever kidnapped Hansel and Gretel. They weren't real people? Uh, I, I think they were genuine human beings, okay. yeah. Mm. Um, so you think if the backpackers were well behaved, they probably would have got to their final destination. Well, he didn't get all of them. Now, some got away. Paul Onions, he got yeah. away. Now, before we get on with the show, Chip, uh, the listeners are going to want to know this. Mm. Where were you last week, mate? And have you beaten the charges? <sighs> it, it actually wasn't charges. It was, uh, it was, a, it was a party. Oh, okay. I, I had uh, see. I don't have a birthday. I have a birth week. Right. Was it a really um, long labour? Well, yeah. I mean, I I don't want to go into some of it's quite traumatic. Yeah. Um, but fair bit of ribbage. Um, I I just take the week off basically and okay. just get fucking hammered. I mean, it would have been nice to tell me yeah. uh, before yeah, you went well, off on that bender, but that's okay as yeah. long as you're alive, mate. I mean, yeah. That's all right. Sorry. Uh, we'll have a chat about that off air. Uh, I will let you know that it was difficult, mate, to, uh, to do the show without you because uh, we are a banter show, yeah, mate, essentially. You, yeah. Try and tell me things I don't know. Exactly. It's not enlightening to you, no. uh, but certainly it was difficult. Uh, in fact, I found myself trying to banter with myself mm. and getting quite irritated with me yep. talking over myself. Yep. Uh, eventually, I stopped recording and I took myself outside and kicked the shit out of myself. Yep. Uh, and then I continued on, um, but it, the dynamic wasn't the it same. It didn't help. No, mm. it wasn't good. Uh, But we're on good terms now. Yeah, we masturbated and made up. But we've got the first topic on the show, mate, we need to tackle, and it's a pretty big one. Of Mm -hmm. course, the World Rugby League, it never disappoints when it comes to delivering headlines. Cameron Smith, Chip. um, Is a a cunt. He can be. Yep. He can be. It's in the eye of the beholder. Okay. Uh, Plenty of fucking eyes, though. Yeah. That's for sure. Not many people holding the eyes that say he's a good bloke. Mm. Um, But look, but he's come out after this whole Sharks controversy. Oh, yes. And he wants the Melbourne Storm to have their 2007 and 2009 premierships reinstated, claiming, well, if the Sharks have been breaching the cap, then why can't we have our premierships back? So Cameron Smith comes across here to me um, as one of those blokes that doesn't give a fuck what you're saying to him. Mm. He's just thinking about how that impacts him. Doesn't he, doesn't care about you, What you, how was your day, doesn't care. But if you got out of a parking ticket, I expect to get out of all... But why should you get away with anything? And, and I'm not convinced of the logic at all, uh, this whole... Uh, well, because they cheated only a little bit less than us, it means we didn't cheat at all, yeah. miss. Um, so, for example, I don't know, Chip, if you were a murderer... Um, Definitely Cameron Smith. Not a big <laughs> not a big leap to imagine, actually. Um, I'm not sure if you said to the judge on appeal, but, Your Honour, I know of a murder that happened that was slightly less gruesome than my murder. Yeah. Um, can I go now? Yeah. I don't think that's how logic or the law work. I'm probably not getting away with that, am I? I don't think that so. line of defence. You know, actually, the, the most disturbing part of this for me, Chip, is the fact that he's not just demanding the premierships back. Mm. Um, he wants his minor premierships back as well. Okay. So does he, he wants actually want those? The whole kit and caboodle. Yeah, he really? does. Well, I wouldn't knock him, mate. The Roosters have quite a few of yeah, those. Yeah, we've got a, yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Prefer After, the majors. Yeah, although you know, for a while there I didn't because we weren't winning those. You know, actually the best trophy to get is the club challenge trophy. Is it really? Well, because you've got to win the grand final to go in the game in the first place. That's true. So to be there, you've already won the grand final. Yeah. And then you've beaten the other team. 
it's almost like unlocking that boss at the end of like exactly. Mortal Kombat. Like yeah. when you finish the game and then you get to fight some weird cunt yeah. you've never heard of. That's right. Uh, which is kind of like us because you're like, yeah. who the fuck are we're these We're always teams? fighting people we don't know. Yeah. I mean, no one's really... If we not, don't know you, we're probably going to fight you. But those teams are sort of unrecognisable to most Australians. So, you know, I mean, the what are they? The Wolverine, Timberwolves, London, Broncos. Oh, God. Wakefield, yeah. Trinity, yeah. FC. Yeah. I mean, I don't give a shit who they are as long yeah. as you win. Yeah. Now, is there any other demands that Cameron Smith chip could uh, be asking for in this? So he doesn't just want compensation for these premierships. He might start asking for other things as well. Well, I would imagine he's going to want um, to cash in all the fuel receipts from driving to and from, um, you know, all these reporters, uh, press conferences, a- a- anything to do with those um, strip premierships, basically. I had mm. to drive here and talk to these people about it. I want that money back. Um, I usually charge $36 an hour to, um, you know, wipe myself or whatever. I exp- I was there for an hour. I want that 36 bucks. plus I want a tax refund on, you know, I think it'll just go out for everything, whatever so he, he can claim. all of his tax deductibles yeah, back. Yeah, let's get the tax deductibles back. Yep. Let's get some petty cash receipts back for, you know, I had to, I had to buy a... Um, packet of polos because you know my breath smelt like dick yeah right i couldn't do a press conference like that so needed a mint <laughs> and he would have had uh, plenty of petty cash by the sounds of it maybe three million dollars worth hmm. uh, according to the most recent report so would he be willing to give up his year's salary to get the premiership back All right we just say okay well we'll give you the we'll give you the premiership back cam and mm. you can go and stick that in your cabinet but we want you to pay back the 350 grand we pay, paid you for that season so would he have to go the whole twelve months living like a pauper? Like no, I mean, just just give us three fifty k, and you can have it back. What if we said to him, <clears throat> "You can't have any money." Yeah, like ever. You, like yeah, you can't even yeah. earn. You can't even take change on the streets. Yeah, good. Yeah. You can only beg for food. Yeah, uh, and sort of wander aimlessly yeah. around Melbourne. Yeah, uh, probably doing you know sickening impressions of Jeff Kennett as yeah. pantomime, yeah. busking, um, attempting to play the euphonium. Again, he could only be paid in food. He yeah. couldn't be paid in or cash. drugs. Okay, drugs is Let's, fine. You know, that's, we've got to yeah. offer him something. I think you're onto something. I think I would let him have at least one of those premierships back mm-hmm. uh, if he was able to survive on the Melbourne streets for a year without earning any, any money. money. Yep. And no. he couldn't rely on the kindness of his family. He couldn't get donations. I don't think there would be much anyway. No, I don't think he'd have to worry about that. But um, he couldn't be in a men's shelter. He'd have to do hard time yep. on the streets. Oh, I like it. Now, Chip, I'm assuming uh, if Cameron Smith gets his wish here uh, that he'll want new additions of the grand final rings printed. He'd probably mm-hmm. want a whole replay yep. of the way things happened in 2009, for example. Um, and I'm just wondering if we grant this one little thing, you know, give them an inch, they'll take a mile. I'm wondering if Cameron Smith will then demand other things like the current Melbourne Storm team playing the 2009 squad of the Parramatta Eels again. Mm. And he might want to sort of turn back the clocks of time and relive the 2009 moment. Because for him, it all got soured when it got stripped from him. Yeah, I think probably where you'd end up is Cameron Smith touring the country and trying to uh, book out stadiums to replay the 2009 grand final on the the big screen Mm. while he walks around the field in a suit with a microphone, just talking through... What he's thinking at this moment, how he's going to play this pass, and you'll see here that I do this, and you know, mm. really give people an insight into into Cameron's view of the two thousand and nine, <laughs> like like that shitty commentary Jeez. you get on DVDs, exactly. You know, when you you and, and sometimes you can't get it off. You can't. Like, take I'm just it trying off. to watch the yeah. Shawshank Redemption. It's like the director's commentary yeah. or something. I don't give like a shit this. what yeah. Stephen King thinks. Yeah, we don't, mate. We just want to watch the fucking film. Yeah, right? we didn't want to watch the two thousand and nine grand final in the first place. No, it would be yeah. tough to sell tickets to that one, Fuck. wouldn't it? You know, a, a rigged 2009 grand final from 10 years ago. <laughs> Step right up. <laughs> <laughs> These um, will sell out. Yeah, so. That's right. And Pre bookings essential. And knowing Cameron Smith's attention for detail as well, Chip, mm. he'd want to recreate 2009 in every aspect. Um, he'd probably be demanding people walked around with a you know, bit of frosted tips in the hair, yep. um, asking the crowd to get really pumped about a new show called Modern Family. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, really get that 2009 ethos. Definitely. Um, what's Brexit? <laughs> That's well before I know. Yeah. <laughs> let's get really let's, forward let's, thinking. Let's just go right back to the days before. He could maybe even get uh, Fooey Fooey Moy Moy to get in shape again. Yep. You know, yep. just just for that one game, yep, definitely. Like that one appearance. Definitely. Um, no, Pell's a good bloke. <laughs> yeah, back then, Pell is still 
uh, a credible person. Uh, Daniel Mortimer still had a future yep. in 09. Yep. Um, so you'd have to kind of get him back and say... Jared Hayne. Jared Hayne, that's right. He would have been only a couple of years into his career at that stage. Yep. So much promise back could then. Could have been a good player. I mean, let's face it, there's still probably a few assaults Where committed. is he this this, this weekend? Oh, which, Do we know? Which, which jail? I think it's uh, Maitland. Has he been moved? I think so. Okay. Yeah, they like to move him around because, yep. um, well, you know... The give, every, give everyone a shot at him. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Share him around. <laughs> now, um, there's another interesting slant on this story, Chip, and you're going to love this because it involves one Paul Gallon. Now, Paul Gallon came out after Cameron Smith had said this publicly, mm. and he said, Cameron Smith needs to be, inverted commas, careful. Ooh. What does it mean when Paul Gallon says, you should be careful? Well, I think you've got to ask Hapawade. Yeah, he wasn't very careful, was he? No, he he, he didn't take uh, Gallon's advice, and and he didn't take my advice either. No, we thought he'd win that match. I, I told him to knock Gallon out, and he didn't listen to me at all. No. Serves you right, really. Well, he didn't take that chainsaw in. That's mm. what we suggested. Mm. Start with the knees. Yep. Bring him down. Do you think uh, Gallon was scared of a thumbing? Uh, I don't think Gal cares about anything like that. He doesn't that. really mind. He would breeze for a rape. He'd bre- <laughs> <laughs> He'd probably be pushing back. <laughs> Yeah, so um, <laughs> break his thumb off. Uh, no, but just it was the kind of strange phrasing here, Chip, that from Gal, which made him almost sound a bit like Tony Soprano, like mm. you owed him money. Yep, you know, like he's not a good position up, to be in. No, really, turn up at your your kid's playground one day. Mm. And go I, if I were you, Jimmy, I'd make your dad make sure he's careful. Yeah, make sure he's very careful. What What does that mean, Gal? Nothing. Just just some friendly you. advice. I'm looking forward to. Um, the Sharks taking on the Storm this year because I think Gal will probably uh, keep an eye out for uh, Cam. <laughs> Cam might try and, you know, throw one of those shifty dummies and just get fucking, you know, road trained by the, uh, the, the weird, tree. The weird thing about that is uh, the two men, I think Gallon's actually older, but it seems like Cameron Smith's older mm. because, you know, he's got that kind of like balding patch and he kind of already looks like a middle-aged man. I think Gallon... Um, doesn't like Cameron Smith for a number of reasons, but probably the biggest one is because Cameron Smith has won some stuff. Yeah, and that would get up my fucking. Gut. That's really got to hurt someone like Gallon. Mm. Like, I has he ever won anything in rugby league? Well, there was that one thing he won in twenty sixteen, but that looks like it's going to be stripped off him. That's the reason he's so well, fucking angry. That's why he's angry in the first place. But yeah. that wasn't really him that won that, is it? It was kind of more the other people that mm. helped win. Well, I think when Ben Barber was very good that game, and because he had so much coke, they mm. couldn't catch him. Yeah. Now, Chip, sticking with Paul Gallon for a moment, uh, he had some very interesting declaration to make this week. Mm. Uh, when asked what he would do if the club was stripped of its 2016 premiership because of salary cap breaches, he stated, I'd quit the rugby league and throw away my premiership ring if that ever happened. Okay, so step one, if you're getting stripped to the grand final, don't you get stripped of the ring as well? You wouldn't be throwing it away, would he? You'd be giving it back. So that's one fucking stupid thing. And the second thing is he said he'd quit rugby league. Yeah, has Gal just incentivised the NRL to actually push ahead with that? Well, fuck. Give me the ring back and fuck off. Great. I think most of the rugby league community would be uh, behind the move. Mm. Um, if the NRL said, well, if, 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 if you can promise Gal that you will quit, <laughs> yeah. uh, we'll definitely do this. We'll definitely. We'll sign up to it. I think he could probably solve a lot of world issues, Paul Gallon, mm. um, if he went around the world saying, look, Palestine, look, yep. Israel. Um, if I do some concessions here... And uh, we go for a you know a two state solution. Yep. Um, I'll stop playing rugby league. Yeah. And I think you'd probably find most of that region would unify. Well, it it'd be huge for the game. Mm. Um, I th- I think you know it it could actually um, especially in Tel Aviv. Definitely, you mm. could seed the NRL into the Middle East. Which I mean, really, that's what you know we've needed that for a long time. I mean, we've spoken about this off air many times. I think it could be a great thing. In you, fact, you know how they say, you know, it's like when you're trying to get off a drug, you know, if you're a heroin addict, you get some methadone and you kind of just dial it down a bit. Yep. Like it's obviously very violent. There's a war going on, but you mm. get some NRL players in there and they just sort of throw in some domestic violence and really wean them off. Yep. Yeah, lower um, levels of violence. I also think, you know, if you could develop the teams, um, let's say we have the, um, the Israeli uh, rugby league uh, division. Yep. And then you've got your Palestinian rugby league uh, conference. And then the two uh, premiership winning teams could play each other in the ultimate derby. 
I mean, yeah, that is a local derby of uh, that's, epic that proportions. Would just be, oh, it'd be a sellout. Would they play like have a stadium kind of halfway over the disputed borders? Well, I think what the hard thing is you'd have to swap the countries at half time. At half time, you'd go. I'm kicking yeah. off in Israel. Yeah, which then, it, which I mean, I, you know, probably some Palestinians would be like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Mm. Let's swap. Yeah, and it, but the worst part is when Israel swap, they probably occupy that end. Yeah, and they don't give it back. No, that's the hard thing. They They'd don't be swap. camped down there. Yeah, they don't swap back again. Like you go to move in and there's all these farmlands been kind <laughs> of put been in set there. up and there's been some zoning done. Yeah, um, I hate it when we pick holes in our own brilliant plans. Yeah, it's really irritating. Uh, what should Paul have threatened instead, mate? If if this doesn't go down yep. well, um, what should Gallon have actually put on the table apart from him quitting? Um, should he put that he'd stick around for another five years? Yeah, that's that, a good that start. Like definitely would have um, been pause for thought there. Yeah, because you don't want to make a mistake on that call. No, if the NRL went fuck, he's going to play into his forties. Yeah, how are we going to deal with this? Give him what he wants. He's got the ultimate leverage in that situation, doesn't mm. he? Maybe go into coaching. Maybe he could have said, "I'll go into coaching." What would he specialize in as a coach? Losing. Yeah, probably. How to deal with loss and yeah. loss and grief. Yeah. Do you think Paul Gallen would be a good counsellor for um, domestic violence victims of NRL players? I think so, because he knows so many offenders. Yeah, and he could go and they go, oh, Frankie's not a bad bloke. You know, yeah. he's, just, he's in the inner sanctum. He only, he only tapped here, really. Like, he didn't, like I've, I've put bigger hits on my kids. So. Well, hopefully he wouldn't advocate for domestic violence. No, um, I think he'd just be a softening influence to say, look, okay, you got bashed. There's but, two sides to every story. You know, what are you going to do? Sit around and get upset with yourself? I mean, you, you'll heal. I mean, I know. You know, I mean, I I got to be honest. I hope Gal gives better advice than that. Yeah, then you'll heal. <laughs> yeah, we would hope so, mate. Uh, if the NRL push ahead with its plan to strip the Sharkies of their 2016 premiership, um, I'm just wondering if there's a way that the Sharks should be allowed to earn it back. Okay, great. I okay. think I've got an idea. I love it when you get your ideas. So we need a new show. It's going to be a take on an old show, but it's going to be called "I'm a Rugby League Player. Get Me Out of Here." And you do the wrong thing, okay? There's there's a problem with your team. The whole team gets committed to a season. Uh, six episodes, I'm a rugby league player, get me out of here. And, and we where just, are they stationed? We drop them on an island. Okay. Okay, they're on the island. Like an island with some cannibals? Yeah, why not? Okay. You know, we can change the themes. Because there should you know. be some penalty. You can't drop them on a beetha. If it's the sharks, for example, um, I'd like to see them on a little island off the coast of South Africa. Okay. Plenty of sharks around there. And get them surfing. Oh, okay. So not on the island, off the coast of the island. Yeah. You want them swimming what, to, a to the couple island. of clicks offshore. Let's, let's drop them in the water, swim to the island, Ep 1. Okay. Okay, Ep 2. So, Ep 2, whoever made it to shore alive. Exactly. So you've got now, you've you've culled the, the week, all right? You're ready, you, you know, you've got your salary cap again next year, so you buy some new players, no worries there. Yep. And it's all about the bonding. Okay. Uh, will they bond, episode 2? Yeah. Well, I mean, it'll be a difficult one. I love the Sharks are renowned for having their backs up against the wall and, and fighting well. So I'd imagine they might be a team that could probably scrap their way through mm. hunger. Yep. Um, could improvise their way through an ugly meal. Okay. Um, so I get, I get the feeling if they were, say, half the squad made it to shore, yep. um, drenched and cold and alone. Yep. Um, I'd say they're one of the few rugby league teams that would perform well. That might make it. So, yep. you, so you're up to EP3. EP3. They've I'll got some it. rudimentary. Is that, the ep- is that the episode where Chad Townsend eats some poison berries? That's four. Oh, okay. Ep, ep four. I was yeah. going to save that for later because... Sorry, mate. You know, Spoiler you, alert. Yeah, yeah. Um, but ep three, you, so you've got some rudimentary shacks, okay? You've got the hierarchies has developed a bit. Bit of Lord of the Flies in there, okay? Right. Uh, who's, um, who's Piggy in that situation? You know, like the fat kid they kill with the boulder? Could have been Gallon. <laughs> for all you know, Piggy Gallon might have been the guy... You know, I know he doesn't wear glasses, but yeah, I get the feeling you're right. They they might have isolated him and then <laughs> cracked his skull open. It's, it's got dark, mate. It's 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 a new form of uh, isolating the defence of Paul Gallant. I love He's it. kind of been. You know yeah. what they went? They went just fucking retire, mate. <laughs> 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 and do you know what the worst part is? Crack skull. He'd get up. He'd keep going. He'd get up and play. He would. He'd play for years. HI. He'd still be spewing at the HIA. Oh, he'd be going, I don't need a fucking analyst. I just, don't. I don't need a. I, I, he wouldn't be able to talk. No. He'd be stuttering and dribbling. Yeah, because he's had a half hemorrhage. Yeah, yeah he's, he's actually dying. Yeah, and but trying to trying still, to play the ball. Go, he doesn't even axe. have the ball. I'm going to make this fucking hut, <laughs> and he'd, he'd yeah. be thundering away at it, half brain dead. Well, quarter brain dead quarter because brain he's dead. already... He's lost half. Yeah, he's, yep. he's off half of the half. So, yeah, I'd say he would 
probably push through until the rescue, yep. at least. Okay, so Ep 5. The rescue? We, we, we're getting close to a rescue, but we have to have a false rescue. Oh, okay. So, like, you know, get their hopes up and then just dash them. Okay, so what, they see a, a they ship see offshore. They see the thing, the ship's waving at them. Yes, yeah. hi, we, we see you. We understand you're there. You're that, thirsty, you're hungry. The captain gets the binoculars out and goes, oh, let's not rescue them. It's the sharks. Yeah. Fuck them. Yeah, I'm a Bronco supporter. If we rescue them, as soon as they get on board, they're going to be, like, cooking our books. Yep. Uh, we're going to be in deep financial shit. All my drugs will be stolen. Oh, they'll be rooting up the crew. It'll yep. be awful. Can't so they, they fuck off and they never pick them up. Yep. I love it. Yep. What's Ep6? The actual rescue. Oh, okay. Yep. So we do get rescued. So what we're going to do is send out a, uh, a small dinghy. And okay. we're, going to, we're going to get them off two at a time. Right. And um, they'd weigh a fair bit with all those roids. Welcome back to the Voluntary Tackle. Now, Chip, the surface of the SCG has been really chopped up over the last week. Rough. Uh, yet by an inferior sport. We'll, they'll remain nameless. Uh, but they've chopped the shit out of the surface. Mm. And obviously the Roosters are now shitting it. We've got the round one game with Souths coming up very soon. And we may not have any grass in which to play it on. Uh, so the question for the show today is, if the grass can't be repaired in time, is there a surface substitute the NRL could use to get footy played there faster. I think this might benefit the Roosters. Okay, how so, mate? Because you play on that shitty ground week in, week out. You you start to learn what you can do and what you can't do. Mm. Visiting teams, they're going to struggle. So what would that surface be, though? You, you're talking about gravel. No, well, we could, we could throw a bit of gravel in there, mm. get a bit of tough. If it's all chopped up. Mm. But, I mean, it'd make it a fortress because I know every tackle you're going to lose all the skin off your forehead. Yeah, that's um, right. So you're not going to want to go there. No. You'd be intimidated. But that all of our players would probably have a similar thing. We'd have to have skin grafts every week. Yeah, but I think you'd toughen up after about six weeks. Okay. You'd get that scar tissue. It doesn't break as easy. Okay. And you'd end up looking like those characters from the horror film Hellraiser. Exactly. Yeah. Just have that kind of scarred, mangled mess of tissue. Um, I'm wondering if uh, you know we should do something a bit out of the box because obviously the Roosters are innovators. Robbo's yep. an innovator. He Definitely. likes to stay ahead of the curve. Mm. Um, what if we uh, just ripped up all the shitty grass because yep. it's all almost all ripped up already and just replace it with trampolines? Great idea. You know, like slam ball. Have you ever yep. seen basketball meets trampoline? We could do the yep. same thing for footy. And the whole surface could be a springboard. What about if we use that stuff that you get outside of uh, pubs when they drop the kegs off? They've got that kind of... Also, the, when, uh, the sort of coward punch insulator, so someone yeah, hits exactly. their head. Yeah, you know, exactly. They, ha- they also have it on uh, playgrounds for kids if they fall off the thing or something. It kind of breaks I don't know, mate. Bit. It's a bit, it'll make it a bit nerf footy, wouldn't it? I, I hate that the fact that they've done that with kids' play equipment, by the way. I love yep. the fact that when I was a kid on the monkey bars... You'd hit the deck. I, well, if I crack my skull open, mm. I knew from then on, don't do a fucking handstand yeah. from the monkey bars. Yeah, don't be a fuckwit. You know, it, it teaches yep. you early... Don't be a fuckwit. Which I think both of us really needed that reinforced from an early age. Yeah. And um, I stand by my brain hemorrhage. Yeah. It's the best thing that ever happened yep. to me. Well, it certainly improved your looks. Um, my marks dropped. Um, but look, going back to this surface issue at the SCG, what if we made the whole thing a ball pit? You know, like when okay. you throw the kids yeah, in. Spongy when, balls. Yeah. Or, or those plastic. Oh, probably plastic, the plastic ones. The plastic I'd say. balls. Yeah, I yeah. understand. Make it about five metres deep. Yep. And just go. You know, 13 on 13. What about if we had um, the field submerged in about, you know, a foot of water? Just a foot. Okay. So like, you can kind of still run. Yeah. Your kicking game really slows up. It's going to make the game a lot tougher. It's sort of like rugby league meets water polo. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. But you know how you play rugby, you might play touch footy in the water in the pool or something. Yeah. And you, you run really slow. Cause yeah. You, you, but if the water was just up to like below your knees, just a- calf length. Sort of those same pools you get like at Olympic swimming pools, you know, when you have to walk the out tops. of them. Yeah, mm. so they walk through them to get the chlorine off the feet. Yes. A sort of that level yeah. of depth. Okay. Yeah, I don't mind that. Yeah. yeah. I think you'd see a very different game. You'd definitely see some tactics come you'd, into play there. You'd see there. Cameron Smith trying to drown some people. Yep, definitely. You know? Really hold him down oh, after to play the ball. For minutes. You know. You know. And then, You've of course, get off he'd, him. he'd walk away and go, well, yeah, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. Uh, and by the way, while you're at it, give me my 07 and 09 premierships back, and you cunt. if he is dead... Um, he was playing for a penalty. Yeah. I could imagine, actually, a player floating away from marker, dead, face down, and yep. Cameron Smith going, Sir. Sir. He's taking ages look, to play the ball. he didn't play it square. I look. want the penalty, please. Yep. He's such a bastard like that. Uh, look, I've got one final issue here, or one final suggestion, I should say, Chip. Yep. Um, what if, uh, being the Roosters' home ground, 
we just furnish it with cash, just cold, hard oh, cash. Yep. Just airdrop some hundies in there. Yep. Obviously, Nick Politis has got a fair bit of that already. Yep. Um, it's been working well for the Roosters at training. I know yep. we like to train on cold, hard cash. So the problem you've got there is you've got your... Uh, okay, so let's say it's the Newcastle Knights coming to the uh, SFS with a new surface or the, the SCG uh, yep. with a new just surface of cash. Fucking money everywhere. Yeah. And the ball goes out to Kenny Dowell. He's going to be looking at each note for the remnants of any cocaine that was left on any note. You're right. I don't think you know, Kenny Dow so would be thinking it, but it'd be good for the Roosters because yeah. he wouldn't be thinking about his defence. The ball would go over the sideline. He wouldn't even notice. He'd just be like trying to unroll. Which one's rolled up? This one looks rolled. That could be Kenny Dow any game, though. To That's be fair. True. That's I think true. He's, he's always got his head in the clouds yeah. and thinking about coke. So um, I don't know if it would distract him just because of that. Yeah. Could be right, yeah. Um, but, you know, I mean, look, it's been a great incentive for us. I know, so, yep. you know, the, the brilliant thing, especially on away trips, um, I know that Nick Politis has organised coaches where all of the, the seats were lined with cash. Mm. Um, and then anyway, they go on field trips. Yep. And it's just pathways full of cash. He's been really clever about that because he just leaves the cash there mm. and doesn't say anything. It's, it's, it's not in a contract. It's not necessarily for you to take, but if it goes missing, I don't know. Oh, look, I'll, I'll just put it there yeah. um, if you want to sample if, it. That's if, not if my business. If someone takes someone, then let's, you know, just call it whatever. Follow the $50 note road. <laughs> and now it's time for... Venom, Preetum, Venom. Find him. Now, Chip, uh, normally on this segment, our very popular segment, uh, we go through leaked videos. Uh, but on this occasion, uh, it's going to be leaked Google search histories. Okay. Precisely. Um, so I'm going to throw some uh, scenarios at you mm. of players caught with some very dubious Google searches. Oh, good. And I want to know, obviously... Should you ban, ban him, and praise him or we'll find him? Exactly. Mm. So the first one we come across uh, is Shane Flanagan, who's asked Google, how do you inject peptides directly into your scrotum without causing a spermal hemorrhage? I think maybe ban him from doing that for his own good. Okay, really. so for health benefits. I mean, I, I don't see... I mean, how strong do you need your balls to be? Uh, I'd say once you've pierced the outer sac... Mm. Uh, I don't know how big the peptide injection was, yep. uh, but you'd certainly probably would get some leakage. Is he is he, is he just injecting the peptide into the sac, or is he going into the the the, um, the oyster within, or the the, the well, that's uh, a great question. The gland. If anything, he should probably be asking, "How do I properly inject peptides?" Because I don't think it is directly into your scrotum. I wouldn't have thought. So. I wouldn't have guessed that. Like I think if he's you doing were saying, it wrong. "Here's some peptides, inject yourself." I, mm. I wouldn't be just dropping my dax and looking for my ball and just going straight into one and two. I probably two. wouldn't wouldn't go there first. Would you try to harpoon the double, or would you go singles? Actually, go through one and into the other. Yeah, like kind of um, chain Get it chain balling. With. I yep. reckon. Mm. Um, so, uh, I guess to round up, would you ban him, praise him, or fine him? I'd probably ban him from doing that. Okay. I, I don't like him doing that. Next one is uh, Mitchell Pierce, and he asked Google, dog penetration, is it wrong morally if it feels good, question <sighs> mark? You see, is is he is he assuming it feels good for the dog, or is he talking about himself there? See, mm. that's what I'd want to know. Because if the dog's into it, and he might just be, you know, trying to do him a favour, in which case you go, oh, I can kind of praise him a bit for, you okay. know, trying to share the love. Um, but if he's doing it for his own sexual gratification, I think you've got to fine him because you should, I mean, surely people, you have to pay for that. Well, it I'm pretty I mean, sure he's breached some kind of law uh, mm -hmm. if he's having sex uh, with dogs. Although, as you, as you said, it would need to be ascertained whether or not uh, he's orgasming yeah. or the dog is. Who's instigating the, uh, the act? Well, I'm assuming that the dog hasn't approached him. Yeah. Because that'd be strange if the dog said, can you please penetrate me? Yeah. Um, well, a, talking dog for a start would make you wonder. I'd be. He's obviously high. Yep. So if you've got drugs in the mix, mm. um, if his dog's come up and presented in English. Yep. Um, a please, case. For, please yeah, yeah. get in there. Um, so for me, he's he's tripped up a number of laws. But yep. obviously, this is all your call, Chip. Yep. Would you ban him, praise him, or fine him? I think I'd fine him, to okay. be honest. How much? Um, oh, the match fee? I just one just, match just go fee. With the match fee. All right, the next uh, ca the next cab off the rank chip is Paul Gallen because uh, we're keeping our theme going on this show. Very good. Uh, he's googled watch Frozen Two online for free director's cut. Yeah, uh, should I'd you... probably praise him for that because I, I wouldn't have thought that he he's strung a sentence together with that many words or letters in it in his life. Really. 
Well, I Even mean, just spelled direct as cut. I mean, how was his spelling? Oh, uh, he he didn't have the um, the apostrophe. The possessive was that's, all over that's the place. Okay. Oh, okay, that's right. I'm going to praise him for that. I, I'm I'm impressed. Does it uh, do anything for his hard man image that he's trying to get uh, a Disney classic ahead of time? Well, he's probably trying to shut the fucking kids up for half an hour so he can have a nap. Okay, because he has like a few kids now, yeah. doesn't he? He's probably trying to say, "Look, here, kids, here's something to watch. Leave me alone. I'm going to go and ring Cameron Smith and." Tell him he better be careful. I think he's got a kid for every brain cell. I think he's got six of them. He's got six? Yeah. And he's so. done well. Uh, and the last one, mate, we have is actually Mitchell Moses. And he Googled, where do babies come from? I'd probably praise him for um, trying to do a bit of research. Yeah. You know, he's... He seems he's, a bit old not to know that. Though, yeah, but he might be a late bloomer. Yeah. You know, he started to have these feelings. He started to... Um, feel a little different about himself maybe there's an itch where there wasn't one before yeah there's hair where there wasn't hair you know um, there's been a bit of droppage love to talk to someone about these changes he's finally getting some muscle yeah uh which would be good for d because obviously he's awful at that at the moment so that'd be good um what theory did he have before i'm I'm assuming he was probably on the stork theory babies come from the giant stork yeah or the or just you know the postal service in general yeah they just come in a one of those post packs I think usually you get one of those red and white slips. You've got to go and pick it up. Mm. And then you obviously you unwrap it and because these things are airtight, you've, Add got, water. The, you've got a blue baby yep. that's had no air for the last seven hours, yep. which is traumatic. Phantom, freedom, phantom. Phantom. Welcome back to the Voluntary Tackle. Uh, Wayne Bennett, Chip, is about to enter his 98th consecutive season. Mm. And obviously it is difficult for someone who's 117 uh, to maintain that edge Yep. In a very competitive world of coaching, mm. how does he maintain that drive? Uh, what does he need to do? Because at the moment, you'd imagine just his drive to breathe would mm. be questionable at this stage. Well, I think the formaldehyde baths have done him wonders. Okay. I mean, they've kind of kept him quite well preserved. Mm. How often does he have those now? I think he's daily. Okay. I think yeah. he's daily now. Probably three or four hours. He may even travel on the bus in one. I think they've got a bath in the... Oh, like one of those portable... Uh, you know when people get in the, um, the hyperbaric chambers? Pretty much. He's just got that, but with formaldehyde. Yeah, just keep him keep him uh, intact. You know what's annoying about that? Because if he does that on the bus, he's taking up three or four seats. Yeah, but He's really man-spreading. He's, he's man-spreading a bit there, but, you know, I much prefer um, women-spreading. What about the inside of Wayne Bennett? Now, it's, it's okay to keep mm. yourself preserved on the outside, mm-hmm. a la some Egyptian mummy. But I'm assuming, uh, you know, his brain at the moment must be experiencing some kind of mossiness. Look, it, it might be the time to bring this up. I wasn't sure. But um, is it time to download Wayne Bennett? Download him? What can, do you mean? Can, can we, like, um, you know, somehow download Bennett's brain into the machine? Can, can we have an AI coach? Can we have the first AI coach and just download Wayne Bennett? Would we want to replicate Wayne Bennett, though? Because yeah, he's pretty, pretty successful. fucking grumpy, though, isn't he? Yeah, he's a grumpy cunt, but he's successful. I'd say if you put his brain into a computer, it would just shut itself down it constantly. Just go, it just goes, this. fuck this. Yeah. I don't want to be a part of this. Yeah. Because I want it on my terms. Yep. Don't put me in a fucking motherboard. Yeah. Um, I'm going to keep disconnecting myself, and if I get the chance, I'm going to spill coffee on my keyboard. On purpose. On purpose. To uh, brown out your whole state. That'd be a cry for help from AI, wouldn't it? If it was spilling coffee on itself. That's the equivalent mm, of slashing your wrists. Yeah, it's a bit like, I want the on-off button. Um, What about, I mean, you've said download. What about put down? Is there a chance that we might be able to euthanise, I don't know if this is illegal, but uh, euthanise Wayne Bennett if he decides... I think it depends whether we can get him to agree to it. I was about to say, well, I I think this would be forcible uh, euthanasia because Wayne Bennett will never retire voluntarily. Mm. We know that yep. uh, because, you know, he's already gotten past the point mm. uh, of uh, Alzheimer's. Yep. Uh, and he's now some in sort of post-Alzheimer's state mm. uh, where he doesn't think he's coaching Souths this year. I don't know if you've read about this. Oh. Uh, he still thinks he's at Brisbane. Does he? He's, he's reliving 1987 over and over and over again. It might be a good thing, again. though, because, I mean, if he can bring that form to the Rabbits. Yeah. But what if he keeps referring to Adam Reynolds as Alfie Langer? Look, I don't think he'd mind if he's winning. Uh, Adam, surely Adam Reynolds would mind. No. Really? I don't think so. Okay. You know, he'd, he'd probably like, think it was a bit racist. Fuck, you got a lot of tats there, Alfie. <laughs> yeah. A lot more than I remember. Could the NRL go to the extreme lengths of actually relocating Wayne Bennett uh, so that he still thinks he's coaching a first-grade team, mm. but you put him out in parks or somewhere yep. and you get you hire 17 actors to turn up each week and pretend to be a team coached by him? 
So where's the benefit there? Are you talking? Is this like a, a pitch for a TV series or oh, like just a to comedy? Get him out of, or? Just to get him out of the NRL, mate. Just just to get him out. Because at the moment he's not going to go. He's a bit like uh, you know when someone's had nine too many drinks at the pub and they won't leave. And they just won't leave. Mm. Um, you, you're best to sort of lure him outside with some kind of incentive. Now, Chip, they say imitation is the most sincere form of flattery, but I'm not necessarily convinced of that. Okay. Um, I think giving blowjobs is. Yeah. Um, but look, I don't think that would have went down as well in so history you, as you, an idiom. You really have stopped flattering me as much as you used to, I've got to say. Mate, uh, I've had to move on. Um, but it just so happens, another big shout out to a great podcast, which has just started up, is uh, Sports Best Friends, hosted by the Big T. Bloody legend. The biggest tiger. The Big T. Um, who, by the way, is the winner of our uh, iTunes big competition. Big T won. He did, he won. Uh, so he is going to be the proud owner. It's already in a bundled up in a package. He's got some Asahi lids. Uh, some a sock, old, I think. Some old hair, a sock. Um I think there was a signed VB can, or is it a Foster's? Foster's, yeah. Yep. Anyway, great package. Well done, uh, Big T, for entering that. Uh, one by default. Well done. Um, so, on his show, Chip, uh, we're listening together as we do. We like to listen to the podcasts in the same bathtub, mm. which is a bit strange. Um, and we noticed that the biggest tiger did an impression of us. Excellent. Um, now, we want to repay the favour. This is sort of like, you remember that little kid, okay. Haley Joel Osman, yep. did pay it forward? We want to do that, but okay. it's not forward. It's just back at you. Okay. We want to pay it back at you. It'd be a shitter film. Yep. Um, so we thought we'd do our best impression of Sports Best Friends, and here it is. Hello and welcome to Sports Best Friends, the only NRL podcast to not be hosted by Eamon and Chip. Hi, I'm Patty. Uh, Patty, are you feeling okay? You, you kind of sound like you're on helium. Yeah, no, I'm, 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 I'm actually feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I got to say, Chip, it was eerily close. It was fucking excellent, wasn't mm. it? Yeah. I mean, I was amazing. I, w- I was pretty substandard, which yep. made it sort of middle of the road. Yeah, which is kind of where we sit. That's where we sit, yeah. yeah. I think if anything, we could do their show. We're well balanced, you know. Well, that's a lie. Because I kind of, you know, raise the platform a bit and you just kind of bring it back mm. a bit. So it's, it's in the middle. I was impressed that you could just pick up a guitar and nail the theme tune, yeah, by the way. Yeah, that's what I do. Yeah, that was good. And I was able to pick up my vocal cords mm. and just fuck it up. Yeah, which which is what we needed you for. Yeah. I mean, that's why you get paid the big dollars. Why break a habit? No one fucks it up like you do. Oh, yeah. Well, Chippy, we've come to the end of the show, and uh, it's been, I assume, I'm not sure, about 73 minutes of absolute madness. Um, I'm not sure what we've learnt. I'm not sure what the morals are. I just know that I'm a lot hornier than when we began. Yeah, I feel that way. Yeah. Anyway, look, we're at the end. Uh, and this week, we thought we'd uh, finish on a joke from you. Oh, good. Far away. Guys lost at sea. Okay. It's funny already. Floating on some uh, floatsome, as you do. And uh, deeply religious fellow. And uh, someone comes by in a, in a motorboat and says, Hello, mate. Uh, why don't you jump on? I'll rescue you. He says, No, no, no. That's all right. God will save me. Guy motors away thinking, well, he's a fellow of conviction. A couple of hours later, he's getting a bit sunburnt. A big uh, passenger vessel comes by and they beat the horn at him. He says, no, 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 I'm fine. God will send someone and save me. Don't worry. And uh, a few more hours go by. He's starting to burn up a bit. He's a bit dehydrated and not feeling very well. And finally, there's a helicopter that comes past and drops down a rope for him. He says, no, I don't need your worldly rope god will save me and by this uh, stage he's really blistering up like Keith he's, Galloway. Uh, he's he's looking pretty ordinary passes away and uh goes to heaven and uh he's a bit upset with the uh, old man upstairs at the gate and he says uh i had faith why didn't you save me he said i sent two fucking boats and a fucking helicopter you dickhead see you next time <laughs>